does have $50 here from Kat saying, let's go Kuon phase. And in case you missed it or in case you're just tuning in, folks, I'm pleased to announce that we did in fact meet our Kuon phase incentive. So after this next run by Miss Scarlet Tanager, she'll be showing us Kuon phase, that secret stage that you'll that no one ever shows off. You'll get to see it live on a marathon setting for the first time here at Flame Patals. But without further ado, come join us under the mulberry trees as the Scarlet Tanager weaves us a tale of Japanese spirits. Are we good? Hi. So, by tale of Japanese spirits, you mean mulberry trees, silkworms, and cannibalism. Welcome to Kuon, the best, objectively best, from soft game that has ever been made. You can see, they made it. This game was made by the same people who made Dark Souls, Demon Souls, Elden Ring, and in fact, if you look at the credits of it, a lot of the people who worked on um, Elden Ring actually worked on this as well. So, my name is Miss Scarlet Tanager. And as you guys can see, my lovely bunnies are making an appearance yet again. The white one is Tally, the gray one is Garrus. And if you guys would like to perhaps see them a little bit closer up and maybe a, a trick or two, let's make that Phasmophobia bonus game. Now I have a, I have somebody on a couch if you want to introduce yourself. Hey there, um, I'm MJ and I'm really happy to be hanging out with Scarlet and Tally and Garrus here. They are super cute. There's also chinchillas in the mix, I'm just saying. But I want to get one last check. Which of the two phases are we playing today? Well, I'd love to tell you it was close, but I think everyone is absolutely hyped to see you run Yin Face after you did a stellar yeah. run of Yang Face last time. It's $361 to $181. No contest. Yin Face takes it. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. That paper doggo. Yes, everybody wants to see the paper doggo. Paper doggo is also in the Kuan phase, but you only ever see it in like actual gameplay during um, Yin phase because you never use it during Yang phase. But start game with current settings. Okay, time will start as soon as I finish the brightness settings here. In three, two, one, go. All right. So Kuan is more well known for how expensive it is than how good of a game it is. <laughs> so Kuon is unironically one of my favorite horror games, and that is after I've only ever had it for a couple of years. Now, it comes from a very unique time of um, FromSoft that was sort of between Kingsfield and before Demon Souls. And weirdly enough, it sort of does play similarly to uh, Demon Souls in terms of like the controls a bit. You can sort of see some of the DNA that would then evolve into Demon Souls and the later Souls games down the line. However, that is literally the only thing they really have in common. But we are playing as Utsuki, and I'm going to completely mess this up here. This is fine. Pick that up. Cool. And we are a completely innocent to the world, has never left her little family mansion girl who was just lousing about in the garden with her sister when her sister says, I'm gonna go do something real quick. And then she vanished and didn't come back. So we are trying to track down our sister, ostensibly, more on that later. But everything is spoopy, everything is scary, and everything's gonna be fine. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally fine. Nothing, nothing morally repugnant is gonna happen to our poor little cinnamon bun here. All right, so these two are the Mulberry Twins. I don't remember if they have actual names. I just call them the Mulberry Twins. You'll find out more later why they're called specifically the Mulberry Twins, but this game somehow makes mulberries terrifying. Because <laughs> for those who don't know, silkworms, you know, the thing that we get silk from, they pretty much exclusively eat the leaves of a mulberry tree. Mm -hmm. And let's just say that wicker baskets, silkworms, and mulberries are involved in this game in some pretty questionable ways. 
leave it at Am that. Am I for going now. to have a hard time feeding my bearded dragon after this? Because silkworms are his favorite. <laughs> you feed <him> silkworms? <laughs> I do. <laughs> Look, have you ever have you ever seen a silk moth? I I have not. They're actually really pretty. Um, so I'm actually holding the controller in a pretty strange way. I'm holding it like this. I'm not actually holding the right side of the controller, and I'm doing that because this game has the rudimentary beginnings of a stamina run system that you would then see in the Souls games later. Um, you never see a stamina, stamina bar on screen, but there is a stamina meter, sort of. But by... Could you not? By never actually letting go of the run button or letting go of the directional pads, except for like certain times, like during a scene transition, I have infinite quote-unquote stamina. Sure, that's how running works. Yeah, but then the game decided, the developers decided they wanted to put the run button on circle instead of square. And the, com the confirm and interact button is X. And now if you ever held a PlayStation controller, you know why that might be pretty difficult to consistently hold the circle button while also mashing the X button. So because of that, I hold the controller weird so I can do that. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, because if I ever let go of the run button, Utsuki will sort of gasp. And this is the game's first puzzle. I'll explain more afterwards. Two, three, four, five, six. Two, three. Two, three, four, five. It's a classic combination lock puzzle. And you know what's kind of funny? I don't actually know how I know that. <laughs> um, I When I first played this game, I actually ended up looking it up because the hint that the game gives you isn't really a hint. It's like some weird star chart thing. But the code is six, six one direction, three the um, opposite, and then five the opposite of that. Alrighty. Okay. So, MJ, you haven't seen this game before, right? Except for uh, your research, obviously. A tiny bit. Um, it's yeah. definitely going to be my first so, time seeing the Kuan phase. Yeah. So I'm doing this little bit here for safety. Normally I wouldn't come to this area until later, but there is a fight that can be a little bit of a wisdom tooth um, early on in the run. So I went to go pick up some extra quote-unquote ammunition because this game has a spell system, sort of. I kind of hearken it to like ammunition in one of your weapons in Resident Evil. You have spells that consume little paper, um, I think they're ofudas, and each one of the spell types does different things. Some of them shoot fireballs, some of them shoot um, icicles, some of them summon dogs made out of paper. We'll see this paper dog later. Ooh. But yeah. So you guys saw the what I call the wibble wobble vision when the screen goes all weird. And it only does that two times, like two in two different scenarios. One is when you get uh, hit a like spooky jump scare type thing, which half the time happens if you just run around like, if we're like I am, but sometimes they are scripted. I'm also going to pick this up for safety. All right. But the other time that they happen is if you are one hit from death, and it's called the vertigo system. So when you are in vertigo from damage, it means you are one hit from um, death, and you no longer can use any of your spells. So it only lets you use your like last-ditch knife attack, which is rather annoying, so hopefully we don't have to deal with that. <laughs> that is a but, point. What are your healing options at that point? You have health items that you can get, but honestly, I only have—I only ever use them if I have to. I try to like—I try to save them until later, because this game actually has an infinite heal in terms of the meditate ability. Now, ideally, we won't see it in Yin phase or Kuan phase. There is a moment when I pretty much always use it during Yang phase, just because you don't have anything else to do for like a solid 15 seconds. But essentially, your character stays in one position and just meditates and just thinks over their life and their life choices for a minute, and it heals them to full. <laughs> so that's fine if you're not in a okay. hurry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
So this game, like, I'm sitting right in front of my, where I need to use this item, right? And the game's like, you can't use this here. <laughs> because I wasn't on the right pixel. So this game can be a little bit intensive. Now here, I'm going to glitch into the enemy's hitbox and pick up an item behind him. And now he's not gonna let me cross, rude. No, don't you do, oh. Okay, I went wibble wobble vision right here, which means I'm one hit from death, so I'm going to use one of my extra healing items. And now I don't have to worry about that. I could have used the meditate ability, but because the enemy was right there and meditate forces you to stop in place, I probably would have gotten killed. So in that instance, I did use a healing item instead. Now, our sister is missing, and we know our sister is wearing a red kimono, and we just saw somebody in a red kimono walking away, dragging a dead body behind them. Yes, that is our sister, but we're going to ignore her. Every single time that Kureha, the sister, actually appears in the campaign of the game and we are ostensibly looking for her, we're going to go in the other direction. Because <laughs> it turns out our sister is sus. Our sister is incredibly sus. We just and don't want to do with that. We don't actually want to No, we just, we just don't want anything to do with her entire deal. So, a lot of the story of this game revolves around something called the Kuan spell. You know, roll credits. And the Kuan spell is what is supposed to make a new quote unquote mulberry tree. And by mulberry tree in this game, it's sort of like a demon possessed tree eternal life thing and part of that involves getting killed getting your body put into a wicker basket with a silkworm your dead body then consumes the silkworm this this is this is all super technical stuff and you keep having to go into the wicker basket with progressively larger and larger creatures until you are consuming people and that's where the cannibalism comes in and our sister, at some point before the game, accidentally got thrown off of a cliff. Now, our character, uh -huh. Utsuki, went, oh no, when oh no, I love my sister. And these little, these little, little child demons just came up to her and went, hey, you know, you know what you can do to bring your sister back, right? You know, you know what you can do, right? You should put her in this wicker basket. So Utsuki did that. And her sister came back and she was totally fine. Until she wasn't. Because oh. it turns out, part of the spell, it does bring people back from the dead, but they have to keep consuming larger and larger creatures to stop their body from falling apart. Oh, that's so really poor, spooky. Yeah, so it is super spooky. So our sister, our poor sister, uh, has now gotten to the point where she needs to consume people. And she's also at the point where she's not very happy with Utsuki anymore. Which is going to come into play later. Yeah, this seems like a bad situation. It, it, it's a pretty bad situation. Just like just like that little enemy down there, which is called a Gaki. We are going to ignore him for now because he is not my problem. My problem is up here. Now the entire... Th this game sort of cut into a couple sections. You have the mansion phase, the temple phase, and then like... The, the, the other temple phase, which I guess is technically a mansion, but whatever. Um, and then you have the underground phase. Now, the point of the mansion phase is to collect some little discs and nails for a puzzle. Oh, I'm supposed to go through that door. Um, and some nails for a puzzle later in order to get to the next area, which is the temple. Now, the reason I read that book in the other room there was to make this wall fall apart. How those two things are connected? No idea. The game just says that they are. He's gonna hit me, isn't he? Yep. The yeah, game just says that they're connected, like, so they are. There's very like Sorry, specific triggers you need to hit, right, to uh, to trigger whatever yes. the next story beat is, so you can continue. Yes. Literally, the first thing you saw me do was pick up a random healing item. That just wasn't for safety. No, you have to pick that healing item up in order to trigger a um event in the next room. Why? Reasons. All right, so you guys want to see the paper doggo? Yes. Now we get paper doggo. So the combat system in this game. Let me just summon paper doggo. Everyone's ahead of paper doggo. This is one of two Aww. times you actually use the spell. Now, one problem with the combat of this game is the bosses have 
stupid amounts of iframes. Their iframes are frankly ridiculous. Now, you ha sometimes I have managed to get through this fight without losing the Paper Doggo, because um, your summons only last for a certain amount of time, but usually it ends up like this. So you can see my spells going straight through him, and I'm going to mm -hmm. walk away for safety. There we go. Now, the reason why a bunch of my spells went through him is because whenever a boss monster specifically, but monsters in general, is in the middle of a... Uh, I, I'm not entirely sure how it works, but it's like an animation... Oh, that's rude. Okay, it's done. Um, an animation... Transition? I'm not sure if it's on transitions yet or not, because it's kind of... It's difficult to tell. The enemy is given iframes, so invincibility frames. Now, the problem with some of the bosses in this game, except for a couple that you can cheese out fairly easily, um, don't be like that. Oh, don't be like that. <laughs> okay, there we go. So it becomes a problem in some of the boss fights. Boss fights can either get over fairly quickly or they can take you a hot minute because even with summons, the iframes can kind of screw you over and you can end up running out of spells. Now you saw me grabbing some extra spells earlier and that was why, because I have run out of spells in that fight before. Which then makes it difficult because trying to take that guy out with a knife is an exercise in frustration. Got it. If I could just cut in for a minute, I'd love to announce we've hit $27,000 on our way to Phasmophobia. That's less than 3000 more, actually, as I'm looking at that tracker right now. And if you've got some time, I've got a donation related to sibling love. There you go. Uh, <laughs> the worst brother ever sends in $150 saying, if I win it, I'm giving away the PS5. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> well, right, in addition, so oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. So that's my uh, housemate, Tim. Um, we... Every single time I run at a marathon that has a PS5 on as a prize, he will always donate enough to get a to get a uh, to get a pony in that race. And I keep telling him if he wins that PS5, he did not win that PS5. I won that PS5 because it's getting here and I'm taking it because it is the only PlayStation system I do not own is a PS5. So he, he knows what the score is. No, it's it's not yours. If you win it, it's mine. But please continue. Well, actually, related to that PS5, that $150 not only got him a chance to win it, but also some candles I hear were made by none other than you, our lovely runner. And also related to that, there are Zelda-themed candles I hear. And with that, our Zelda incentives for tomorrow have been open. <laughs> so for the Ocarina of Time randomizer, you can donate to pick your file name of choice. And also you can donate to unlock the Wallbox one hit KO, which is to say that anytime our runners, Nuclear and Fant, run into a wall, that's one hit KO. They're out. So if you want to see that, that's $2,500. And again, all of these donations are going towards our $30,000 milestone incentive for Phasmophobia, which I see that number climbing. We're getting ever so close. You can do it, chat. I believe in you. <laughs> now, this I really want to me. see Phasmophobia. I do too, because it's actually a lot of fun to watch um, speed runs of Phasma specifically. I watched it at uh, SGDQ was when the last one was. It was so much fun. Yeah, I saw that run too. That was fantastic. But funnily enough, this game also actually, actually has like, I don't think it's a one hit kill mode, but you can actually set it to, once you're playing it on New Game Plus, which I guess technically I am, um, you can actually set how many how many hits to game over. <laughs> there is a mode for that in this game. So is that next? Are you going to invent a new category? Oh God. I've, I've really <laughs> been trying to invent full game as a category, which is play every single one of the uh, three campaigns. Hasn't caught on yet. As far as I know, I'm the only person who's run it. Granted, I'm the only person who runs this game at all consistently right now. So this puzzle looks complicated, but it's just put everything to the right. <laughs> it's, it's not hard. The puzzles here in this game look difficult, but once you know the trick behind them, they're really not. So they don't change, they're always the same solution? No, they're always the same. 
the solutions are always the same. The first one is a weird constellation puzzle that I just treat like a combination lock. The second one that I also forgot to mention, the second one that you saw that was sort of like the light up puzzle, for lack of a better term. Um, that one actually has a bug. So you saw that I sort of stayed at the tutorial for it for like an extra second longer. If you go through that tutorial too quickly, sometimes the game will bug out and make you do the puzzle twice. I don't know why. All right. So if you guys watched my AGDQ run of Young Phase, y'all know who's going to make a bit of an appearance in a second here. His name is Chad. Is it Chad? It's Chad. We're gonna be getting Chad here in a second. Chad is a jerk. We don't like Chad. <laughs> Chad is a specific um, gaki enemy in the temple that's in a hallway that he, in each phase you have to go through like th three or four times. Thankfully you go through that hallway less times in Yin phase than you do in Yang phase. But Chad, I have lost more runs to Chad than any single enemy in this game. <laughs> Ugh. Chad. Chad is a jerk. Uh, it, no, pick up, U Utsuki, pick up, pick up the obvious thing on the floor, please. No, don't look at the, don't look at the dead body. Pick up the, there we go. Sometimes the radius for picking items up in this game can be a little sus. So just because mm. of Chad and Chad being Chad, I will show you guys the meditate for, um, for safety. So I hit the back button here and this is a full heal. You can use it anywhere in the game and it's infinite uses. Now, just because of Chad, I'm doing that. Also, because there's a ghost here with Chad. Oh. I have not given the ghost a name. Only Chad gets to be named. Alright, and here is Chad. Hi, Chad. Please don't, please don't ruin my run. I have safety saves, but I'd rather not use them. Well, that was pretty rude. Alright. We're gonna go in here. For no other reason than to hit a cutscene in order to trigger another cutscene. <laughs> and by see a cutscene, I mean skip a cutscene. Alright, so we got time for maybe two donations here before I get to the next uh, explanation. Alright, well, Coyote sends in $25 saying, let's support an amazing cause and get that Phasmo! And Materia17 also has $25. Let's get that Phasmophobia run. Folks are hyped for Phasmo. More ghosts, more spooky times, and while I'm at it, let me squeeze in that third, third donation. Anonymous, $25. More spooky times, please. <laughs> so, one thing that can be a little difficult to get used to in this run is memorizing where ghost spawns are. You can see I didn't go straight through the room, I sort of went around it. That was because there was a ghost spawn right in the middle of that room there, and I'm skipping over it. Also, trying to run while you're in the middle of Wibble Wobble Vision. So I, it gets to the point in some areas where you're pretty much running blind for a minute until the game decides it wants to give you your vision back. Yeah, but, watching it I, just now, I had no idea what was going on. Yeah, remember how I said don't follow your sister? Technically, I'm following the sister right now. Because <laughs> we saw her go this way, we saw her go that way, and now we're not going to follow her anymore because we don't want to follow her. There's a, There'd be dragons down that hallway. <laughs> so we're going to say goodbye to our sister, and we're going to leave, and it's going to be completely fine. Yeah, she'll be fine. She'll be fine. So a little bit about the timeline of this game. Yin phase and Yang phase happen concurrent to each other, but it's really, really weird the timeline of when Yin phase takes place. Now between this cuts or this uh, black and white fade to black here, um, about three quarters of Yang phase have happened. So for safety's sake, I'm actually going to put a save here because <laughs> I have this is the second place I've lost the most runs to. So even though I have a safety save, I'm going to do one anyway. Um, so story-wise, these two phases are happening simultaneously? Yes, but in that fade to black, when I was in the temple to this area here, a large chunk of um, young phase happened. And in that large chunk of young phase, uh, Utsuki died. So oh. we're currently playing a dead person. At least that's what I think happened. It's sort of ambiguous. But you do know that from this point of the game onwards, Utsuki is dead. We do know at this point of the run that she is dead, and I am pretty sure that she was alive at the beginning of the run. <laughs> so in the space of that cutscene, entire sections of Yang phase happened in which you get to see Utsuki get thrown off a cliff. 
by her undead sister. And at some point during that, Utsuki herself got put into a, whisk, a wicker basket. And as I explained earlier, that tends to go poorly. So, uh, Utsuki has turned into a ticking time bomb, and we are currently playing as said ticking time bomb. I thought you said everything was going to be fine. It's fine. Here's like a reenactment of what her sister did. Her sister's not very nice. She's not good people. Also, we're gonna follow the sister, even though that's always a bad idea. So I've lost. I have tied to this up here. So let's see if I can get the dodge. We got dodge. Oh, I got hit. Okay, that's fine. This is fine. This this is fine. Oh, I don't have any health items. Gonna get it. Oh, I got it. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> this is fine. Okay. I may I may be one hit from death right now and I can't see my screen hardly, but it's it's fine. It's fine. So part of the quote unquote Kuan space spell is you have to consume larger and larger creatures nine times in order to pull the spell off completely. Now in this cutscene, the totally not sus Mulberry twins told Utsuki to get into a wicker basket. Which she did because she's not the brightest. Alright. Just for safety, I'm gonna heal here. And she passed out and woke up in a completely different area. That happens quite a few times in the cutscenes of this particular chapter of the game. And it doesn't make sense until you play Kuon Phase. Oh. Which you'll be playing later. Yes. Because Yang Phase and Yin Phase happen concurrently to each other, but Kuon Phase happens at the end of the other two, so it gives you the actual ending of the game. And you get to see what happens to poor now undead Utsuki. She'll be fine. Good. I'm glad we'll all get to see her be fine. Yeah, she'll she'll be fine. All right. We got time for two or three donations here. Okay. Well, the knight who goes knee sends in twenty five dollars, saying had to donate to help get more spoopy games. In fact, I've actually been given the go ahead to let everyone in chat know once we hit our phasmophobia bonus game incentive. There's another secret incentive just waiting in the wings. So if you want to get that out of there, if you want to summon that ghost out, you know what to do! Exclamation mark, donate in chat! Do it. So we gotta you find got find out the secret. Yeah, you gotta find out what the secret uh, incentive is. And I mean, if you guys want to see more bunnies and maybe a chinchilla, you can just... Speaking of bunnies, I, I if could... you've got time. I could be persuaded if we had some more donations, like if we met <laughs> Phasmophobia by the end of my run. Well, I mean, you would certainly make someone very happy for more bunnies and maybe chinchillas. Char Bunny sends in $500 saying, there are bunnies! Today is a fantastic day! Chat, come on, you, you, want, you want to make Char Bunny <laughs> happy? You want to make everyone who loves bunnies here with us tonight happy. Yeah, I have taught my rabbits two tricks. They know how to stand on their hind legs when I do this with a treat in my hand. They also know how to spin in circles. <laughs> in fact, oh. whenever they want a treat, they'll come up to me and start spinning. <laughs> I mean, I want to see that. I have never seen a bunny do a trick. We got to get mm -hmm. this. Bunnies are actually very, very smart. They are very, very trainable. You can take them on agility courses and everything. It's adorable. Whoa. Mm-hmm. My bunnies do not know how to do things like agility courses, but they do know how to spin in circles. <laughs> is, is spinning in circles a sign, would you say? Because Katara's got $100 saying, give me a sign. And there you go. if your bunnies are willing to give it, you got to give them those donations. The, the, sp the sign of spinning bunnies. It's like a perpetual motion machine. <laughs> <laughs> Chad is demanding bunnies, I want to say. <laughs> and right. we are actually $2,500 away from that phasmophobia incentive. Sorry, back to you. So, there was a very sus looking dude who sort of screamed and ran away from us. That is, I think, some, t some of the characters sort of blend together in their character models and their designs, but I'm pretty sure this is um, Sakuya's brother who gets killed during his... Um, during Sakuya's campaign, the Yang phase. And we're going to make him have a really bad time. <laughs> like, this man has been through so much, and we're just going to make him have a really bad time. He's running away from us, but he has a thing that we need. 
I'm just gonna... Are you gonna... Okay, you're, you're behaving. Cool. So you guys get to see paper doggos again. Because I'm going to administer an absolute beat down to this poor man. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, first we summon the doggos. Everyone say hello to the paper doggos. And then oh, we're going to go to the side. Point. We're gonna summon the Kugutsa Ona, which is the second summon. And I'm just gonna stay to the side to force him into a corner. <laughs> So as long as I stay like this, the boss is stun locked. <laughs> and this is a super unfair fight. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of rude, and I kind of love it. <laughs> okay, he took he took out the Kugutsu and also I'm just gonna summon another one. Now, sadly, that was the last instance of Paper Doggos. I'm just gonna stay behind him. He is now dead, and I'm taking his key. So this game's version of keys are called like sacred cloths. And they are supposed to, they, they act as um, keys to doors, but what they're doing in universe is they are wiping away mystical energy shield things on doors that stop you from going through them. But in reality, they're just um, claws covered in blood. Don't worry, it makes sense in the universe, I swear. So that room covered in blood that we just exited, that was actually Utsuki's room. Because we are in Utsuki's house right now. Utsuki's house doesn't look like Utsuki's house used to look. <laughs> Sadly, I some questionable that things was have the happened. Decor. <laughs> yes, no. Um, questionable things have happened, and that diary we picked up was Kureha's diary that sort of tells you her story about what happened when after she got resurrected and all of that. How, with some little earworm she was getting from a certain pair of mulberry twins after she got revived... She went from being her sister's best friend and being super happy, you know, to completely blaming her sister for her death, and now kind of wants to consume her sister. We don't want that to happen, so we're just gonna just not pay attention to her sister. And anytime we see her, we're just gonna try and run away from her. Thankfully, at this point, I don't think we really interact with um, Koreha anymore, because we have now gotten to the point where she doesn't really show up. If this was Yang Phase, she does actually chase you. But she never actually chases you in Yin Phase. Because the little Mulberry twins, and you can see one of them's a uh, little worse oh. for wear. Because during Yang Phase, Sakuya, the other playable character, torched one of the Mulberry trees. She set it on fire. So the other twin is not very happy. Oh. Is not very happy with Sakuya right now. And I'm sure it is going to be fine for Sakuya. So if you watched me during AGDQ, I walked through this entire room because it's almost an instant death if you run in that particular room as Sakuya, but you can do it as Uzuki, it's fine. We are actually getting relatively close to the end of the run. And just for safety's sake, because I have lost runs here as well, I'm going to save again. All right. Because sometimes you can, in one particular room here, you can get sort of stun locked into a wall. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Okay. So we picked up how some hammers can... and chisels. Oh, huh? sorry? I was just wondering how come you can run in one phase in this room, but not in the other one. Um, you know those like vertigo, spooky, spooky events that sort of pop up? Yes. There's one of those there in Yang phase that isn't there in Yin phase. Um, oh, I see. Yeah, and some of them are triggered automatically, no matter what happens, but some of them are triggered by running over the um, trigger range. And the one in Yang phase is only triggered by running over the trigger. <laughs> if you walk <laughs> over the trigger, it's fine. If you run over the trigger, you're going to have a bad time. All right, so you're just creeping through so you don't get to the... Yeah. So this room has an instant kill in here, so I'm going to be careful. Uh, just don't go through the center of the room. <laughs> Stay around the edges and you're fine. The Utsuki got a couple tiny little chisels. Do you see this massive brick wall? You probably saw it earlier. And by brick, I mean solid stone. This massive stone wall is going to get broken down by this tiny chisel. Oh Utsuki is secretly the actual She-Hulk. <laughs> yeah, powerful. I mean, Sakuya does pretty much the same thing in Yang Phase, so I guess they're both She-Hulks, but... All right. So this is the nursery area that we sort of got a glimpse of earlier. And essentially the mulberry twins are just, or the, the surviving mulberry twin rather, is just saying, don't
don't worry, you're gonna be fine. Just find somebody to merge with. Okay, we have to be careful of this guy in particular, because this guy can be a jerk. Gonna be, don't do it, don't, oh. That like little weird red fart gas attack can almost instantly kill you. If it gets you um, anything higher than like almost full health. <laughs> He's Thankfully, I do have. It is terrifying. Thankfully, I do have some backup healing items just in case. I didn't even mean to dodge that guy yet. I did. We've hit twenty-eight thousand. Two thousand hey. more to go. Yes, let's do this. We still have Kuon phase, y'all. I mean, if you guys want to see some up close bunnies, you better give me two grand before the end of Kuon phase. That clock <laughs> is counting down. All right. So in this cutscene that I just skipped. Utsuki's father uh, sort of spilled the beans about how he's the big bad here. He's the one who orchestrated sort of the Mulberry Twins coming into coming to sort of possess the trees. It's complicated and not too well explained. It's very it's very from soft in that regard, and sort of pretty much tells Utsuki that she doesn't really have a choice in this and just to to get eaten by her sister. The dad's really mean. We don't we don't like the dad. He definitely plays favorites. Clearly. Clearly. Definitely plays favorites. He's rather rude. But we're not going to do that because we like Yutsuki. She's a cinnamon bun. Super innocent cinnamon bun. All right. So we are actually almost at the end of the run. Um, the time, time will be at the fade to black at the end of this... Um, of this walkway. Now I've let go of the run button because it actually disables your run button at this point. Because Utsuki's starting to feel the starting to feel the desire for some silkworms and mulberries, and uh, she's fine. She's not a zombie, chat. She might be a zombie. A little suspicious. And time. Nice. So this cutscene plays at the end of both Yin phase and Yang phase. In the end of um, Yin phase, it's from Utsuki's point of view, and the same cutscene plays from Sakoya's point of view at the end of Yang phase. So they do end at the exact same point, where Utsuki has seen better days, and Sakoya actually comes across her again. Sakoya was the one who gave the paper doggos to Utsuki. So the paper doggos are Sakuya's fault. Help me. I beg you. And now poor Utsuki has become a zombie. Uh oh. Don't do that. Ooh. Yeah. Now if you never unlocked Kuon phase, that's where the game ends. But since we met that incentive, we now get to see the actual ending of the game. This is Kuon phase. Kuon phase is a Oh, do we have any Oh, right. The, sorry, the estimate is 10 minutes. And I also completely forgot. Um, what was the um, time on Yin phase? I forgot to ask. The time I have on screen is 34 minutes and 20 seconds. That's not bad at all. <laughs> That's not bad at all for not having played this game that much lately. GG. All right, the estimate for um, Kuan phase is about 10 minutes. Uh Usually I'm finish I finish it in less than eight, but just to be safe, because the thing about Kuan phase, it's almost entirely RNG. It can either be six and a half minutes or it can be ten. Alright. So in Kuan phase, we are playing as Abe no Seme. Now, if you know anything about Japanese history, you know that Abe no Seme is a real person. Um, they gender-swapped Abe no Seme, so you're playing as a female Abe no Seme. And functionally, Abe no Seme just shows up on the scene, looks around at all of the carnage, gives a big old sigh, and goes, well, guess I gotta mop up some trouble. So time is going to start in three, two, one, go. All right. Functionally, Kuan phase is just a good old run to the end game. It's a victory lap around most of the areas of the game. You don't really have to fight anything. There's no puzzles. You're just going to grab some key items, skip some cutscenes, 
and defeat the big bad. And the big bad is Utsuki's father. The one who was playing favorites and messing around trying to get, trying to become immortal through the Kumon spell using his kids, because he's mean. All right, we got time, since this is just sort of a run um, to the final boss, we've got time for maybe four or five donations. Okay, well, those donations are coming in for Phasmophobia. Uh, actually, Anonymous sends in $25 saying, Phasmophobia is so scary. Imagine you're a ghost minding your own business and these strangers barge in, all calling your name and demanding you show off for them. Ugh. Well, I mean, we won't get the chance to do that unless those donations come in. Again, we're at $28,000 out of $30,000. That's a little under $2,000 to get that incentive met. And if you do, we unlock that secret incentive. Hide it in the shadows. You afraid of incentives, chat? Are you afraid of incentives? Anonymous, again, isn't because they send in $100 saying Phasma run high. But Field 94 might be. Such a spooky night. You got enough time for one more. This will be our last one then, because Field 94 is a little creeped out. Such a spooky night. Good thing I'm here in the comfort of my... <gasps> what was that sound? <laughs> well, Field 94, uh, I hope you have a good ending. But thank you for that $15. Again, all of that's going to Malala Fund. And all of that goes towards our Phasmophobia bonus milestone incentive. All right, so this garden tree area we've been through a fair few times, that big tree that I've been running past, that's actually the other mulberry tree. So there's two mulberry trees and each one of them has a demon child associated with it. One of them got burned down and the other one's kind of mad about it. Now, for some reason, instead of just burning down the second mulberry tree, Albino Seimei is going to use uh, magic stuff to bind it using some of the pins that we used in the little disc puzzle that I did early on in Yinfei's. Which means we have to then go, go those pins. But for some reason, there's only two of them there instead of three of them. So we then have to go find some more. Hence the victory lap around a relatively enemyless area towards the final fight. So we Setting got time on for fire seems faster, but okay. It is! Honestly, they, they, they probably should have because... Theoretically, somebody could just unbind the mulberry tree and set the twin loose again. So I think fire is probably the better plan, but uh, what do I know? So one thing that doesn't really get explained. At the end of Yang phase, Sakuya is actively being chased by Kureha, by the now very insane cannibalistic sister of Utsuki. Between the end of Yin and Yang phase and the beginning of Kuan phase, I'm pretty sure Kureha died off screen because she did too long before she had something to eat, I guess. But during that time, she absolutely laid the beat down on Sakuya. I didn't show it in that cutscene there, but the next time you see Sakuya, she is seen better days, let's say. But don't worry, she's going to be fine. All right, we are going back through the nursery slash lab area that we've seen a couple times before because we need some more nails to stab that tree with. Now, just to show off Paper Doggo again, because I know y'all want to see Paper Doggo. Usually I would skip this cutscene immediately, but there we go. We got a little bit of Paper Doggo right there. Everyone loves the Doggo. Oh yay. The Paper Doggo, um, I think I mentioned it. Yeah that the dogs were actually given to Utsuki by Sakuya, the little dog summoning spell. And that becomes important in the final cutscene of this game because you will get to see Paper Doggo and all of its FMV pretty puppy dog glory. All right, so this is the room where that had the instant death from earlier. Suddenly the doors are open. They never explained why the doors got open, but it's fine. And we are just going to kip into this room grab some nails and go all the way back to the entrance underground area. So you've got time for free donations. Okay, well, <laughs> Peace Egg sends in $50. Wants us all to know with this public service announcement, take it from me. Nightmare is tough. 
Nicole Goodnight and Bath and Jan are incredible for running it, and they're going to make it look easy. Let's get that nightmare ghost hunting goal met. If you haven't noticed on the schedule, this is an any percent nightmare run, which is the hardest difficulty for phasmophobia. Instead of the usual three pieces of evidence, evidence, they only get two pieces of evidence. They have to really know their stuff as much as Miss Scarlet knows about Kuhan. So if you want to see lovely ladies know, knowing their horrors, you're going to want to get those donations in. We're at 28,500. Thank you all so much for that chat. So now we are going to fight the most infuriating boss in this whole game. Because he not only has ridiculous iframes, he has a shield that you can never tell when the shield's going to actually strike. See, there it is right there. And that shield nullifies all damage. Well, that seems so unfair. This, it is incredibly unfair, and I kind of hate it. <laughs> This reason is, or this fight is entirely the reason why I haven't grinded out this phase of the game before. <laughs> I do have a run on leaderboards for it, but it's too much of a pain to try and get world record in. You can sort of sometimes guess when you can hit, but for the most part, it's just hope you get lucky and hope that he doesn't use the shield too much. But he uses the shield constantly, so... Probably got time for a couple donations. All right. King Raggle sends in $100 saying everyone loves the parabolic microphone. Well, I sure hope you love those tools as much as we love the paper doggos here in this run, because that tool is one that they use in Phasmophobia. Uh, Alien Crustacean sends in $100. No comment, but thank you so much for your donation. Got time for one more? Yep. All right, well, Amarlin sends in $100 saying, let's see that Phasmophobia run. Wow, that was an unintended $100 train, but you know what? I'm loving it. We're getting ever closer to that run. This is an exceptionally bad luck on this fight. <laughs> but it's okay. That's more time for more donations. <laughs> we love to hear that around here. Uh, Got a quick train for you. Anonymous sends in $150. Anonymous sends in $10. Anonymous sends in $25. Anonymous sends in $20. And Anonymous sends in $50. All of those have no comments, but Anonymous, we see you. We're naming you. We thank you for your kind donations to Malala Fun, to Phasmophobia, and to a great cause. Oh, I still got time. Anonymous. We still got time for maybe one more. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to wait for him to give me an opening and he's really not. <laughs> well, Samwise says uh, lots of love for Horror Block. We agree. Lots of love here. Thank you so much for your $10. They also say hi to their brother who will likely be watching this spot. I'm guessing their brother is not as bad as uh, as yours is about that PS5. <laughs> Which by the way, again, any of your donations, minimum $25, $25 gets you a chance to win all of the amazing prizes that Frozen Flygon showed off right before okay. we started this run. Time is coming up as soon as um, we hit the fade to black at the top of these stairs. I took out the father, but that means there's a body for Uzuki to consume suddenly. Time. <laughs> so in this cutscene, yep, in this cutscene here, Sakuya has uh, seen better days. And Utsuki is like, ooh, there's a body that I can consume. And she has completely fallen to the Kuan spell at this point. She really doesn't have any control over her action. She's completely zombified. So she's going to have dinner. And we're going to skip the rest of that cutscene because it takes time. But this is what happens after Abe no Seme threatens to burn the wicker basket that Utsuki's in. Sakuya begs her to stop, and she does. Now this happens a little bit later. After some time has passed and the Kuan spell actually finishes, which isn't necessarily a good thing in the long run, but Utsuki is an innocent cinnamon bun and she didn't really have a choice in the matter. So she gets to be reborn. She gets to be reborn as a nice mulberry tree. She's not an evil mulberry tree. She's a nice mulberry tree. We like her mulberry tree. And there's the paper doggo. Aww. So part of this somehow, for some reason, reverts her into being an immortal child. At least I'm assuming immortal child. But now Utsuki gets to live outside for once. So I would like to give a 
big thank you to uh, MJ for joining me. I always get a little bit nervous when I'm running in marathon, so it's nice to have a buddy. This was so much fun. <laughs> And I would like to give a thank you to my bunnies who are currently hiding <laughs> underneath my bed. If I could interrupt, there's a donation that would love to give a thank you to your bunnies as well. <laughs> okay. Hi, hi sends in $25 saying, for the buns and the bong. And that again is our, <laughs> our bonk incentive for the Ocarina of Time randomizer tomorrow, the wall bonk one hit KO. All right, so there's the paper doggo, gets to end up being a pet as I'm assuming Sakuya then goes on to take care of Utsuki. And that is Kuan phase. Now, how close are we to Phasmophobia? Uh, right now, we are a thousand, a little under a thousand and three hundred dollars. We are so close. Holy smokes, chat. That y'all better start donating. Do you think that's enough for a little bit of a bunny interlude? I, you know what? I, I would have to check with, <laughs> with our leads, but I would love to see a little bunny interlude. We're right, here in the go. All right, if you guys want to see a little bit of bunny interlude, I will give them a couple treats. It gives us some more time Yay. to get some more donations for Phasmophobia. Uh, now this is going to involve me taking my earbud out, so I won't be able to really hear. But give me just a moment. Yay, well, <laughs> I'm looking forward to this. While she's feeding the bunnies, we thank you all for the love. We've got a couple of donations that just say less than three, but you know what? I'm feeling the love. Uh, Nami's got $25 in saying less than three. JJ sends in $25 less than three. Enosaur sends in $25 less than three. Zoya sends in $10 less than three. We are feeling that less than three for the bunnies here tonight at Flame Fatales. At, I'm sorry, Flame Fatales. Woo, I'm burning up here. <laughs> Garris is being shy. Aww. Oh. Oh. Oh, there goes Tally. Oh. See if I can get the other one. And while we're trying to get Garrus on camera, oh. Bardic Feline sends in twenty-five dollars, saying it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Oh. It's fine. Oh. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Oh. I'm definitely not a zombie, and it's fine. Less than three, but you know the only thing that could make me more incredibly fine? Bunnies. Well, I'm happy to report, Bardic Feline, that you are incredibly fine. And addition to in addition to bunnies making Bardic Feline fine, and Phasmophobia. So let's make it happen. Let's make Bardic Feline more than incredibly fine. Aww. Those were such good spins. Oh. And then to give you guys a close-up, now I can hear you. <laughs> we had Aww. a couple of donations sending in love for the bunnies. Mm -hmm. This one is Garrus. He is very cute and very fluffy. Hi, Garrus. Garrus wants to see Phasmophobia, you guys. Look at him. <laughs> are, you, are you guys, are you guys going to tell this face no? Are you going to tell this face no? Look at this face. Very Garrus. cute face. Do Look it for Garrus. Look at this face. He wants to see Phasmophobia. Y'all should donate for Phasmo. We are inching ever closer to that, by the way, because we're at 29,000! Chat, our next run, our next run isn't that long, so, and you have to meet our $30,000 incentive by the end oh. of it. So, can you do it? I believe in you. Garrus believes in you. I think Garrus believing you is actually a little more important than me believing you. But he is very cute. He is, very he cute. is absolutely adorable. So come on, let's give Garrus that dream. Do bunnies dream of phasmophobia? That'd be kind <laughs> of terrifying. That'd be kind of a uh, little, little bit like uh, what's that movie? What's that movie. Uh, Monty Python's Holy Grail. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for that run and for the bunnies, Miss Scarlet. Um, once again, if people want to find you, where can they find you? They can find me at... Oh, just grab my chair. <laughs> it's weird to be standing. Um, you can find me at Miss Scarlet Tanager. That is M-I-S-S-C-A-R-L-E-T-T-A-N-A-G-E-R. A Scarlet Tanager is a species of songbird. 
Miss Scarlet Tanager at twitch.tv slash Miss Scarlet Tanager. I play mostly horror game speedruns, but I also like to play modded Skyrim when I can with over a thousand some odd mods. And my bunnies, and I guess the chinchillas, because sometimes they're on it as well, have a dedicated webcam. So if you want to see some more of the fuzz buckets, definitely come over and give me a follow on Twitch. <laughs> All right, well, once again, thank you so much for chat. Stick around. We've got another amazing horror run coming up.